thank you for dropping in on this clip, which is a series of clips focusing in on the Sydney Basin and how it works from a natural heritage perspective. As I sit here under this gorgeous yellow bloodwood tree in the scrubland areas of the Lower Blue Mountains, I'd like to acknowledge the Dadag peoples as the traditional custodians of these lands and who have been for thousands and thousands of years. And in this particular clip, we're gonna focus in on why is the Sydney Basin called a basin? Because you would think a basin is this, like a bowl shape landscape that we could maybe look down into and try and work out where the boundaries are. That might be what we end up finding, or we might even have to go further afield. So that's what this clip is about, getting to know why the Sydney Basin is actually called a basin. As we look out to the east over this Cumberland Plain area, you get a sense that that might be what's called the Sydney Basin, because here we are, it's a higher area that surrounds that lower area, and generally a basin's gonna be low, and the escarpment or what surrounds that basin is going to be in the higher area and if we look down there the recent rains have actually caused some minor flooding and in some areas actually looks like some major flooding and so it kind of makes sense that that might be called the sydney basin the thing is though that the sydney basin extends far further south far further north and a lot further to the west and it also extends out to the continental shelf so whilst this might make sense to call this the basin from where we're standing in the present day to get to know why this area was called a basin we need to go back in time we need to go back a few hundred million years the period of time i'd like to share with you is that between 500 to 200 million years ago and if we go back to the first clip in this series of clips i used the length of a sporting field to give a, a visual reference or a visual map of the formation of the earth from 4.5 billion years through to the present day and if we use this again and now map out this period of 500 to 200 million years then whilst that might seem a long time ago it isn't that long when you look back to 4.5 five billion years as the start of the formation of the earth and also whilst it might seem like a long period of time 300 million years when you compare it to the 4.5 billion year history of the earth it's not that long and yet it was so significant to the formation of the Sydney Basin. At the start of this period around 500 million years ago Australia was part of Gondwana and Australia itself was located in the Northern Hemisphere with parts of Western Australia actually straddling the equator. And the shape of Australia was a fair bit different to what it is today, especially the East Coast. There was no Sydney Basin at the time, which is no surprise given there was actually no East Coast of Australia as we know it today. But as with so many cycles in which the earth creates and then destroys areas of land, it wasn't long before Australia started to experience the forces that were to create this part of Australia. And these forces included volcanic activity and plate tectonics through a process that is often referred to as an orogeny. And there were a number of different orogenic events that helped form the Sydney Basin. There was also erosion from the Trans-Antarctic Mountains, where a lot of material has been eroded and washed down by huge rivers to eventually settle as massive floodplains and other depositional environments. The areas of land that these collective forces were helping to build, we refer to as the Tasmanides, and they would eventually become known as the East Coast of Australia. And these events, these forces are nothing new because over the past several decades, there are plenty of examples around the world in which new land has been formed. For example, there is a new island off the coast of Iceland, which was formed in the 1960s and has now developed its own terrestrial environment with a number of species and plants and animals that call it home. And because it's had no human interference since its formation, it continues to provide a natural laboratory into how new land is colonised by living things, such as plants and animals and fungi. And in fact, in 2008, due to this significance, it was listed as a World Heritage Site. With respect to the land building events around Eastern Australia, they were not only significant in forming basement rocks for the Sydney Basin, they were also important as a source of sediment. If you can imagine these orogenies forming these higher areas within a broad region, the basin was this structural entity 
in between these, this lower landform in between these, in which the material that was being eroded and washed down from these higher areas were then deposited into this vast Sydney basin to form the rock types that we see today. At around that 200 million years ago, at the end of the period we're looking at here, Australia had drifted south and a fair amount of depositional activity had started to cease for the Sydney Basin. And that's a brief overview of not only the formation of the Sydney Basin, but also why it's been referred to as a basin. That is this structural entity in amongst these higher landforms and the material from these higher areas being eroded down and deposited into this lower basin area. Whatever perspective or concept works for you with regards to gaining an understanding of what is the Sydney Basin, one thing is for sure, we are extremely lucky here within the Sydney region to be situated within the Sydney Basin because it offers such magnificent landscapes such as this to the west, southwest, but there's also those landscapes that have been conserved for a natural and cultural heritage perspective. There's the marine environments out on the coast and also on the continental shelf. There's a range of different recreational and leisure-based opportunities. And there's sites like this where you can just sit down, relax and enjoy what is on offer. Hope you enjoyed this clip on what is the Sydney Basin. <laughs>